Minister Anthony Albanese is hardening Labor's position on the Israel-Palestine conflict. Let's bring in Shadow Defence Minister Andrew Hasty. Andrew, great to see you. Thank you for joining me tonight. What's your view in this My change? Pleasure. What's your view in the change of Labor's policy here? This is really disappointing from Labor. Israel is a good friend, and this is not how you treat friends. Um, Labor over the last five years or so has criticised the former coalition government for making decisions around Israel's capital, the recognition of West Jer Jerusalem, claiming that was unilateral. And then they've gone out and done this, um, basically changing a, a, a position that's been held for some time and changing the language, which is very emotive. So I think it's very clear they are just managing factional differences ahead of the national conference next week. So this is about politics. It's not about our national interest, nor is it about um, doing the right thing by a friend in Israel. And could appeasing the far-left fringes of the Labor Party ahead of the national conference next week, could that jeopardise our national interest? That's right. I think they're worried about an uprising on AUKUS. And so I think they'd rather talk about Israel than they would about AUKUS. So it just demonstrates to the Australian public that Labor might claim to be centrist and, and mainstream, but in fact, um, their rank and file is quite left and they have positions quite contrary to what a lot of mainstream Australians would have, whether it's on AUKUS or on Israel. Shari, I was thinking about what a, an Israeli general said to me in 2019. He said, Israel always takes more seriously the threats of our enemies than the promises of our friends. And as I said, we've been a good friend to Israel. This is not how you treat friends. And... Um, you know, they have, they have good reason now to, to trust whether we'll do the right thing by them in the future. Is this also embarrassing for Australia in the eyes of our other closest ally, the United States? Well, we have a close relationship with the United States and we're about to host uh, two congressional delegations here in Canberra over the next few days. Um, certainly, it's a close relationship. We have many shared positions. Um, but we always act in our, in our interests. And as I said, I don't think this, is in, this isn't the right thing to do to Israel, nor is it in our national interest. We have a very close relationship with Israel across a number of areas, but particularly with our people-to-people -people links. I had a great discussion with um, the Jewish students here in Canberra only a few days ago. Um, some were from Israel. Those people-to-people -people links are really important. And to build them, you've actually got to do the right thing by your friends. And that's not blindside them with petty political changes uh, regarding mm. some really critical areas of, of Israeli life. Mm. And blindside is the right word because I've just revealed on air tonight that while the Foreign Minister Penny Wong had a meeting with senior Jewish community leadership last week, she made no mention of this upcoming foreign policy change. Now, Andrew, just, on another... Just like, just, yeah. just like when... I was just going to say, Sherry, just like when they reversed the decision to uh, no longer re recognise West Jerusalem as the Israeli capital. They did it on a Jewish holiday, in fact, which was really insensitive to, to a lot of uh, Jewish yep. people in Australia, but also our Israeli friends. Yeah. Now, on another topic, you were calling for a bipartisan defence committee to handle the AUKUS relationship with the United States and Britain moving forward. What's the development on that? So yesterday, Richard Miles, the Deputy Prime Minister, announced that Labor would be moving to establish a statutory Joint Defence Committee, very much like the Intelligence Committee. I've got to acknowledge the work of Julian Hill, uh, the Victorian MP for Labor. Um, he, worked, he did a lot of work on that. Uh, and I think this is very good for our country because we'll now have a parliamentary mechanism, a committee, to hold defence to account across a range of areas, not just AUKUS, but a whole, a whole range of areas, which mm. I think has been the missing piece of the puzzle. Now, your party is also pushing, this is news today, front page of The Australian, pushing for a nuclear option, a nuclear solution to our energy problem. Do you think this is going to be popular with voters? Look, I think we've, we've got to have the conversation. Power bills are through the roof. People want reliable power. Businesses need reliable power. Industry needs reliable power. And um, a really reliable form of renewables is actually nuclear. It's low emissions and a lot of other countries around the world use it. So I think we should have that conversation as well, which is what we're doing. And I think the Australian people are fair-minded. I think they see the need for nuclear power submarines and I think 
um, we should have this conversation about establishing a civil industry to make sure that we are um, a country that can keep the lights on in the future. Mm. Andrew Hastie, thank you very much for your time tonight. Really appreciate it.